periodic table is where all of the elements, over a hundred of them, are organised. So elements meaning different types of atoms. This was organised by a scientist called Mendeleev in around 1869. And what Mendeleev did is he grouped similar elements with similar properties in what we in these vertical columns that we call groups. So for example, the element sodium would have similar properties to everything else in the group like lithium, potassium, etc. Similarly over here, oxygen would have similar properties to um, the elements in that group and helium would have similar properties to everything like neon and argon in that group. Also you'll notice that the numbers on the periodic table increase as you go from left to right and it's this bottom number that will go up by one each time. This is called the atomic number. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 as we go along the rows. The top number is called the relative atomic mass. So this is like showing us how big the atom is and you'll see that these also increase from um, left to right as you go along. So 7, 9, 11, 12, 14, 16, 19, 20 for example. So that's given us an indication that the atoms get bigger as you move from left to right across the periodic table. So the numbers at the top are for the group numbers. So groups go up and down. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and group 0. The rows of the periodic table aren't called rows, they are called periods. Okay, hence the period, periodic table. So the rows are called periods, going across, and the columns are called groups. The um, periodic table is separated into metals and non-metals, but sometimes the periodic table doesn't have that line of separation drawn on there, so we'll draw on it now. So aluminium here is a metal and boron is a non-metal, and the line goes step by step down here to separate the metals and the non-metals. So everything on the left-hand side of the periodic table is a metal so over this way we've got all the metals and to the right hand side of the line we've got the non-metals so over here we've got the non-metals and if you're asked about this in an exam you can always just have a look for an element that you recognize for example oxygen and immediately you realize that the non-metals are over here because oxygen is not a metal and the metals are over this hand side of the periodic table. So as you can see there are more metals than there are non-metals. There's a really big group of metals in the middle of the periodic table which has another name and that is this middle block here and these whole these metals in this whole block here are called transition metals. So these contain familiar metals, for example, copper, zinc, cobalt and iron and titanium, things that you might recognise, silver and gold, things that you might recognise from day to day and also your use in the science lab. When we write the names of the elements in the periodic table. You can see the names in small underneath, for example sodium, but they also have a chemical uh, or atomic symbol as well. And there's a little rule with these atomic symbols in that they always start with a capital letter. For example, sodium here has a capital N and a little a. Magnesium 
has a capital M and a little g. Some of them only have one letter atomic symbols. For example, oxygen is just a capital O, nitrogen just a capital N. Now this is really important because when you put two elements together to make a compound, it's really important to know what that compound is made up of. For example, you see here cobalt, capital C and little o. So I'll just write it up here again, capital C and a little o. If you bonded carbon with oxygen, you would have capital C big O because you take the capital C for carbon and the capital C for oxygen and bond them together. It's really important as a scientist that you know the difference between cobalt here and carbon and oxygen bonded together. That is why it's important to have the capital letters for the start of each symbol because cobalt here is a metal and carbon and oxygen bonded together make something called carbon monoxide and that is a very poisonous gas. So it's really important for scientists that they know what elements are in different chemicals that they're using. So everything starts with a capital letter and if it does have a second letter for the atomic symbol that will be very small. You'll also notice that some are, are very strange. For example, iron is not just I for iron, it is FE. Zinc is not ZI, it's ZN. So some of them won't be obvious symbols and if you're asked about any of them you might have to look through the periodic table to try and find the atomic symbol that you're looking for.